Spa podcast, this time not a month after the last one. I'm actually trying to be more regular. Um, I'm actually recording this on a very different setup today, so I'm hoping that this works because basically before when I was recording and the audio was not so great, I was recording directly into my editing software. So this time I don't actually have any footage recorded yet and I'm recording the audio first and then I'm gonna put that in the software and I'm hoping that'll be better because already the audio sounds better in my ears. The reason why I was recording it in my editing software is because I figured that way I would only have to export it once instead of twice and I thought that would make the audio sound better but we're trying things out. I also um, want to have some guests on in the near future, so I, I want to be able to get my audio sounding nice and crisp. Uh, today's episode is going to be kind of a fuck show, and <laughs> I'm excited, but I'm also, like, nervous because I'm really not sure what this is going to be. So, to give some kind of backstory, uh, this this week was not that great. It, it was just not a good week. So I don't really have a lot that I want to talk about about the week, which is kind of what I had been planning on doing. Uh, but also, my arm is total, like, totally just annihilated right now because, um, so I have, for those of you who don't know, I do freelance work, I do a lot of illustration, and I have chronic tendonitis. So I thought I was getting some carpal tunnel. Uh, because my fingers were just tingling the heck and I was like, what's going on? Turns out it's actually an ulnar nerve in my uh, elbow and it's actually because I like rest my elbow on my desk and also because when I sleep, I kind of like press my arm into the wall and apparently I've been like pinching that nerve nonstop and so now my whole arm is just like a whole, whole big army of fire ants and it hurts real bad. <laughs> like, it's not a good time. So I've just been in, like, pain and just not doing that well. For those of you who watched my vlog last week, I did- I didn't get struck by lightning, but our house got struck by lightning. And then, like, it literally did strike our house. So lightning has struck our house many a time. Like, this is what I use to tell people how, like, I'm very unlucky and also very lucky. Like, I have lots of weird by chance things happen to me. So, our house has gotten struck by lightning on numerous occasions. This is not the first time. And it's because we're on the very, very top of a hill. So, it just... <sighs> and we don't have that many, like, protection, protective things against it. So, we just kind of let it happen. Because, <laughs> I mean, it... it the sky is going to do what it wants. Like, I just... You can't fight nature. So it hit our house and it knocked out basically anything that was plugged in. So luckily none of my robots were plugged in. All of that was good, but it did knock out our internet. So we had no internet for like a couple days. Um, and it also knocked out a couple like lamps. So I've been sitting in the dark all week because I just like didn't want to go to the store to replace my light bulb. And I just now replaced it because I found a lamp that wasn't in use. I didn't even, I didn't even go buy a light bulb. Like I found one in the house and replaced it, but it's a warm light and all of, I have a lot of lamps in my room because my room is like weirdly dark for some reason. So I replaced that lamp light bulb and it's a warm light. And so I have this one warm light in one corner of my room and then in the other corner of my room I have a cool light. And I actually like the warm light better. I think it feels like homey and nice. So I might, when I go buy and replace like a light, I might just like get another warm light bulb so that I have two warm ones instead of one, war one warm one and one cool one. I know this is extremely domestic and boring, but that was like, that's all that happened this week. Uh, I did vlog some stuff, but that's not going to be out till next week just because um, it was just a really really boring week. I just like repotted some plants and blabbed for a little bit. I do have a really exciting video coming out tomorrow that I've been working on for the past couple weeks. So you can be excited for that. It's like the first of my craft videos that I have been working on. And it, it took a couple weeks to film because like things happened right in the middle of it and I had to just like stop. <laughs> so there's kind of a weird gap in it, but I think it came out pretty decent and like 
I got to, I still have the thing that I made and you guys will, will see that tomorrow. So I've, I've been trying to post these on Fridays and then have like my normal videos come out on Saturdays. I feel like that kind of, that kind of works for me. I mean, don't hold me to that. It might change at a moment's notice, but that is the plan for now. Okay, but enough of me just complaining and let's get into the actual meat of the podcast. But something that I've been doing because I haven't been able to use my hands and I've, I can kind of use my left hand with like a computer mouse if I'm like sitting in the right way at my desk. So basically I have been going through my old, I had a PowerBook G4 which is a very, very old Mac computer that is totally like unusable as a computer by today's standards, but it's very aesthetic. The keys are super soft and it is super amazing to type on. And I've been clearing it out and just like trying to get all of the data and stuff off of it. In the process, I accidentally deleted a bunch of pictures and I'm really upset about that because apparently they were like only readable in this really old format. And then when I tried to transfer them, it was like, boop, bye poof, no longer exist, and I was really upset. But I did manage to save a bunch of pictures, including this one, which I'm gonna put on screen real quick because it is so funny to me. <laughs> Basically, uh, pre-teen me was just like really great at taking pictures, and then once teen me happened, it was just like really awkward and not great. But I found this picture that I, like high key want to just suddenly make my icon for everything but i'm worried that people who don't know me will be like why is there an actual eight-year-old as your profile picture are you eight years old um i'm not but i was absolutely iconic as an eight-year-old and so this picture of me taking like a sip out of like a mcdonald's soda cup and it looks like an ad and i'm just like staring at the camera Everything about it is super aesthetic and it's probably not actually soda because fun fact, uh, when I was a kid, we would just like, I mean, we still do this, but I just wasn't that much of a fan of soda and we would literally get just like a big cup of water from McDonald's because it was free and uh, we were very cheap. And so we just get just a big ice water from McDonald's and this looks like it could be an ad. And let me know if like, if I should make this like my icon for everything because I think it would be really funny because it looks ridiculous but also I don't want people to actually think I'm eight especially <laughs> I like tested it out I like put it as like my twitter icon for like a quick minute and then I was like what if I like just just this face and like my last tweet which is like calling out Movavi and then my tweet before that which is like oh I don't remember how I worded it but it's like me in a picture of an well it's not actually me but the the quote is like me waking up ready to fuck shit up and it's like a person in a bed with like an omnibot next to them and just picturing like that icon <laughs> with like fuck shit fuck shit up fuck shit fuck shit up like doesn't it, doesn't it really match that well but I think it would be super hilarious. Why do all like old photographs also, I'm just going on a ramble, ramble tangent now, but photos, old photos with flash immediate look, immediately look better in my opinion. Fight me on this. But when I was looking through all of these like old, old photographs from like, I mean, they're not that old, but they're, they're like over 10 years old. I mean, I'm, I'm not that old of a person. Uh, but like just looking at them, they're like, damn, these are like, they're bad, but they're so bad that they're good because like the lighting is just like this weird flash and like all the colors are weird and like, it's just cool. It just looks cool. But another thing that is on this computer, because as I mentioned, the keys are very nice. They are very soft to type on. I have admittedly gone back and typed a couple just like regular things on here, but then I can't do anything with them because... It's so old. <laughs> so um, there is a lot of a lot of typing, a lot of typing on this computer. And there's a lot of um, old stuff that I have written, like as a kid, like fan fictions and like short stories. And I thought, I thought. 
why not embarrass myself on the internet and read them to you guys? Just why the, what, why not? Why not? Because the thing is, I have a very large repertoire of just like, not repertoire, database. I have a very large database of stupid things that I have made over my years of being an artist because like many artists, I have been one forever. And yes, I'm using the term artist to just cover all of the shit that I did because it was a lot. It was a lot. So I'm going to, I have a couple of them picked out. This is going to be a very long podcast, by the way, if you haven't been able to tell. So sit down, buckle up. We're going to read some shit. I hope that I can get through all of them. I picked out three. One of them is like an actual fan fiction. And then the other two are short stories. And I do not remember what I wrote at all. And that's why I'm so excited, but also very nerve wracked. So I read like the first like paragraph just to kind of make, make sure that it was like coherent because I didn't want it to be just like totally nonsense. Um, I don't know how the fan fiction is going to go. Be- it's a, it's a very tame fan fiction because I know for a fact I was like probably like 10 when I wrote it. So it can't be that bad. But I didn't want to go any later than like 12 because I wrote a lot of fan fiction as a 12 year old and it was all just very, very, very bad porn. So like, <laughs> I have it, but like, I don't, I don't really want to share that. I don't, I don't know. I also think it would be hilarious, but I'm not going to start off there. If you guys want to see that, maybe I could just embarrass myself more and read it, but it's just like. I skim through them and they're just like, they're so bad and they're so graphic, but in like the worst way, because I obviously don't know how any of this works. I don't know if I could even put it on YouTube. It's that bad. Like it's, it's bad. It's like what, how a 12 year old thought that doing the dirty worked and it was not pretty. It was not. But uh, I'm going to, I'm going to read some of these to you guys today and (laughs) oh my god why am i doing this i'm excited i'm I'm really excited to to read these because i just genuinely don't remember what i wrote but i'm also just very nervous because i don't remember what i wrote and they might be absolute garbage but i'm gonna pull these up on this computer and i hope the fan the fan is going this computer is very thick and it has it's hot it is literally doing nothing but like open text documents, but it is very, very hot to the touch and uh, it has a fan going. So I hope the fan is not too loud for you guys. Okay, I have the first one pulled up right now. And now that I have it in front of me, I'm very nervous. (laughs) I don't know if I should read it seriously or if I should like, or if I even can read it seriously, honestly, because Just reading the first sentence, I'm like, it's so different from how my writing is now. So, okay, this is, uh, how many pages? This is three pages. So I I might not be able to get through all three. We'll see how it goes, because I don't know how long the other ones are. But this is a short story, and it's called The Stuffed Animal Story, dot, doc. And I have at the, so it's, the Mac, the old Mac word was amazing, was fabulous. And it has this weird setup where it, like, you have a header and it's on, like, it looks like it's on, like, blue college ruled paper, which is very cool. And then so the header at the top says, Chapter One, The House. And spoiler alert, there's only one chapter. So I hope this doesn't just, like, abruptly stop, but I'm, like, those fan fiction writers that, like, You discover something amazing from them and then um, you go back to check their page and they were last active in 2012. That's me. That's me to a T. I've done that. I have abandoned my fanfiction account. I apologize if you want updates, but they're not coming. (laughs) So this was, I don't know how accurate the date is just because the time for this is all messed up and it says that it was made at 6.16 a.m. And I know for a fact it was not made at 6.16 a.m. And it was made uh, 9 2009 So this was a decade ago that I wrote this. So cut me some slack. We can make fun of me together, but also cut me some slack. 
it was literally 10 years ago I was an actual child okay I'm gonna start I'm gonna try to to read it normally but like I might just I might have a laugh attack at any given moment I do not know okay all right chapter one the house a dark figure lurked among the mist waiting for its next victim oh boy <laughs> Okay, this is gonna take me a while. Okay. A deep breath was taken, and I realized it was from me. I slowly inched towards the creature. Yellow eyes stared into my soul. A strong wind swooped by, revealing the creature's true identity. Four paws the size of tennis balls stood flat on the ground. Two ears rotated atop his massive head. A snout was leading from it. He buried teeth as white as pearls. Not shall pass, he whispered. <laughs> Though his mouth didn't move. The wolf snapped his mouth shut and immediately sat down. I was obviously not a threat. Come, he barked. We must get to know you more. His mouth curved into a crooked smile. It seemed as if he were trying to be friendly. Okay, I'm gonna stop because this is very hard to read. Not only because it's ridiculous, but also because it's it's kind of incoherent. There's no uh, formatting to this whatsoever. It's just a big paragraph. There's no... The the dialogue is just all connected to everything. It's, it's so... Okay, for, forgive me. Forgive me if I'm reading it weird, but there's a lot happening. <laughs> okay, where did I live off? Uh, da -da. It seems as if he was trying to be friendly. I followed, confused as I walked down the cobblestone street leading to a house I believed was magical. Oh, shit. <laughs> what was I thinking, I wondered. For all I know, this house could be owned by some thief, and this was their hiding place. Wow, just owned by a thief. A house owned by a thief. That's some, that's some real good thinking there. I shivered at the thought of being captured. We're here, the wolf whispered. Why is the wolf whispering? Also, that's that's like, there's like no context. It's just like, <laughs> we're here. Okay. I looked up at the top of the house, stupefied. Stupefied, by the way, spelled S-T-U-P-E-F-I-E-D. Good. How can a house be that big? I questioned myself. I mean, it's owned by a thief, apparently. It was a mansion, but without any windows at all. Oh my god. Oh my god. Red flag. Do not go in that house. What are you thinking? I don't care that a whispering wolf is leading you there. Do not go in that house. It stood five stories high and was made <laughs> and was entirely made of cherry red wood a wood that i absolutely hate i wonder if i hated it then or if i thought it was classy but i absolutely hate cherry red wood now that's really interesting a puny dog door was what the wolf walked through but i just knocked how did a wolf get through a puny dog door <laughs> i know i thought i was so clever here but there's no way a wolf could fit through a puny dog door a man about six foot two, about, about six foot two, like I'm not sure, but like about six foot two, opened the door with his smooth hands. Is this turning into an ASMR podcast? Smooth hands. He looked like he was 70. How does he have smooth hands? <laughs> But his face was practically perfect. So he has smooth hands and a perfect face, but he looks like he's 70. Okay. White hair coated the top of his head. Coated, spelled C-O-D-E-D. -E -D. You could tell it was combed. Oh, oh, combed. That combed hair. Oh, wow. His eyes were a liquid blue, and his face was as smooth as a teen who used tons of creams to make their skin look beautiful. Wow. I'm just really laying it thick here with this man and his smooth skin. Come in. His voice was soft and smooth. 
I think this was like the only descriptor that I knew. It was like, <laughs> smooth. Like I, I should have just said. I should have said wrinkled. I, I'm just talking about how he, how smooth he is. But, he, but he's like an old man. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna get through all three of these. Maybe I will. We shall see. Oh, I lost my place again. Okay. Come in. His voice was soft and smooth. I hope my wolf didn't scare you. My mouth dropped open. That's your wolf. Your spelled apostrophe R-E. He laughed humorously. Well, he's not really a wolf. He dropped off. Well, come inside. He's not a wolf. <laughs> this is all just on one line, by the way. There's no... This is totally incoherent. Well, what is he then? I kept my strange questions to myself. It's not really a strange, a strange question. To be fair, like, of all this is happening, this is really not that strange of a question. Well, what is he then? I kept my strange questions to myself, separated my and self. I used, I think it's Anne, but I said A. A used my fingers to brush my long brown hair behind my ears. I, did I have long brown hair at this point? I'm not sure. 2009? I had long hair for a really long time, like down to like below the boobs, like pretty, pretty long. I straightened my crystal blue glasses and strolled inside. I have, I kind of have crystal blue glasses now. I mean, they're just crystal. I, I didn't have them then. They were just blue. More than, more likely than not. Wow. I whispered. Lots of O's. A glass silver chandelier. How is it glass and silver? <laughs> I do not know how the scripters work, apparently. Hung from the ceiling. Stairs seem to be everywhere. There's stairs all over the place. How do I get anywhere with these stairs? Okay, I'm giving myself too much crap. This isn't that bad. For like 10 years ago, I was like 11 or maybe 12 because this was in September. I don't know how accurate this is, though. He led me to what I imagined to be his living room. Not sure about it, but I imagine that this is the living room. Two leather chairs sat facing each other in front of the fireplace. A small wooden table was behind the chairs with a filled teapot and a set of gold-plated teacups. I was awed. <laughs> Not I was in awe. I don't think I understood how that, how that worked. Not I was in awe, but I was awed. Who built this? I asked, still staring at the decor. Why me, of course? I stared at him. <laughs> All one line. When I was in my golden days, I gazed at him once more. I don't have like a he says. I don't like have <laughs> like any like separation of this. It just keeps going. Well, come on, have a seat. Should I start adding, like, he said? Well, come on, have a seat, he said. That would make more sense. I sat down in the comfortable brown leather chairs as the man did the same. He grasped the teapot and poured me a cup of tea. Gold leafing surrounded the cup's rim. Wow, so fancy. You must promise me. You must promise me. You mustn't tell anyone about what I'm about to tell you now. These are so so many red flags that are happening right now. Like, I don't know what, like, 11 or 12 year old me is think going into this strange man's house and just like having a cup of tea with him after I was let into this, this place, this windowless, by the way, windowless mansion by a wolf who is apparently not really a wolf. I sipped the tea and put the cup back on the table. It was so important that you had to call the school and tell them you're someone you're not. Ooh, I mean, I don't even know you. Okay, so apparently this man just like called the school up and was like, yo, drop this bitch off. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, doc? The man chuckled. I'm not real. Wow. Wow. Absolute turnover of the century. I'm not real, he replied. Ooh, so, okay, it's starting to rain. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. This might have turned into a really aesthetic thing or it might be really distracting. But it has started to rain. 
suffering as this man says he is not real the twist of the century i'm not real he replied i'm just a figment of everyone's imagination not just you everyone i read everyone's dreams including yours how did you call the school then beach how, uh, you mustn't tell anyone about it though my mouth was opened and my eyes were wide well suddenly the wolf pranced in the room a bottle of some sort of white substance was in his mouth red alert red alert <laughs> red alert red alert oh my god he dropped it amongst his master's feet that's not how that sentence doesn't make any sense and dashed out of the room my name is christopher what's yours Sarah. Oh, so I'm using my real name. Oh, shit. Self-insert, I stammered. He grabbed the bottle and poured something into his hand. It was gooey and clear. What? <laughs> what in the world? Okay. Okay. <laughs> he rubbed his hands together. The goop had turned into what looked like sparkles. Okay. All right. We're getting back to PG. Resting in his palm, he blew the sparkles into my face. Red alert. I closed my eyes and opened them once more. My hands were fine. I touched my face. That felt fine too. That's all I need to know. <laughs> Christopher stood up from the brown chair and said, Come, I'll give you an example. We walked up two sets of, st of stairs and came to a platinum door with designs of flowers carved around the edges. It must be the future because everything is platinum. We're in a mansion. What kind of weird ass design? A mansion with no windows, a platinum door. It felt cold to the touch. Well, no, duh. <laughs> Christopher. Christopher. Reached out his hand and grabbed the doorknob. Are you ready? He asked. I just nodded, not knowing what he meant. You shouldn't be going with strange men in their windowless mansions he yanked the door open with all his might i couldn't tell what was inside at first a bright light nearly blinded me when he opened the door my crooked face suddenly turned into a smile inside the door were millions of stuffed animals lying on the floor <laughs> My absolute heaven to this day. <laughs> oh my god. This ellipses, 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 is ellipses, 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 ellipses. Amazing! All caps. Four exclamation points. I spun around and stared back at the man. That's not all, Christopher said mysteriously. His finger snapped and everything literally, literally came to life. The stuffed animals were now walking as if they were people. Oh my goodness. They conversed about life and did human activities. <laughs> did human activities. In my first example, such as rollerblading. <laughs> <laughs> the prime example of being a human. I can't rollerblade. I've never been able to rollerblade. I've never rollerbladed in my entire life. But my first example of being a human is the ability to rollerblade. Ugh. Absolutely magical. Uh, they conversed about life and did human activities such as 1. Rollerblading. 2. Skateboarding. 3. And even biking. I don't know how they fit on that bike, but you do you. I poked at it. I don't... I don't know what I'm poking at. It. One of the stuffed animals, maybe? Oh, okay, yes. It wiggled a tiny bit and soon stopped. Christopher walked towards the force field. Why is there a force field? Jesus. And knocked at it with his hand right in the middle. A hole, a hole appeared and the man stepped inside, summoning me to come. I followed quickly and the door closed. Holy heck. Don't touch anything. He, oh, don't touch anything. He, why is he whispering so much? He whispered as a stuffed animal clung to his leg. 
This is reaching horror territory. Hello, hello, take me home, please. Please, in all caps, and spelled with a Z. Christopher kept walking as if it hadn't even phased him. Christopher knocked at the other end of the force field and another door appeared. Wow. We quickly, we quickly ran out and slammed the door shut. We were in a different room now. Wow. Just love that description. There were monitors everywhere. Ooh, this is still my aesthetic, bitch. Christopher and I stepped up to the biggest one and turned it on. It looked just like a diner, except stuffed animals were in it, doing anything people could do. Like rollerblading? I don't see rollerblading. Christopher pressed a sleek red button and a picture of a house was shown. I gasped. It was Peter. And that's, that's the end of chapter one. I don't know if there's a chapter two. Because the, this is very weird. Oh, oh, wait, there is. Oh, okay, so there's one more page. This has taken me 20 minutes to read. This could be a, just like a crazy long podcast. Uh, but I think I'm going to read it because I am honestly really curious about what happens. I might just read the, the two short stories and save the fan fiction one for a different occasion. I just have to see how long these all are. Because this is four pages and this is taking me 20 minutes to read. So, <laughs> okay. Chapter 2. Peter and Amy. Created, oh, okay, same time. So, 6.16 a.m. This is probably not accurate then. Okay. A stuffed animal basset hound walked out of a small brick house. Mom! <laughs> All caps. I'm going out! He yelled. His fur was sleek and soft. I'm not... Uh, I'm trying to uh, record <laughs> and not have my computer just fill on me. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. His fur was sleek and soft as he practically moved in slow-mo. Absolute mad lad. Peter B. Snuggles, you... You be back here before seven or no video games for a week. So some context. I have to this day a basset hound stuffed animal that is very, very large. And his name is Mr. Snuggles. And at some point I was like, so his first name is Peter. And his last name is Snuggles. Because I'm an adult now and he needs to have a first name. So this is who this is referring to. Is this very large basset hound stuffed animal. It was very floppy and a very good pillow. His mother looked him in the eye. Okay, he replied. No punctuation, no nothing, just okay. He dashed off on the hot black pavement, heading for the diner. Another group of stuffed animals pranced by. Because that's how stuffed animals move. Is they prance and they rollerblade. Hey, look at Snuggles. Jasmine whispered. Ooh, who's Jasmine? I don't know her. Who is she? The other stuffed animals burst into laughter. Wow. <laughs> they just say, look at Snuggles. But, but, but no context. He's, he doesn't appear to be doing anything weird. He's just, he's just walking to the diner and everyone's laughing. Don't be so hard on him, Amy barked. Who's Amy? I only know Mr. Snuggles because I still have him. I don't know any of these other characters. Peter stared at the three dogs prance into the diner door in perfect synchronized. That sentence was an absolute train wreck. He felt something wet on his foot and realized it was his drool. Oh, okay. That's why they were making fun of him because he was drooling because he's a basset hound. Okay. All right. I get it. I get it. He slurped it back up and pranced into the diner with his head held high. Music played through about 10 different speakers. Once again, about 10. About. About six foot two. <laughs> about. In all directions. The lighting was dim, except for around the bar. The seats were a bright red color. They were soft, too. There were five tables surrounding the bar in the middle of the diner. Diners misspelled with two eyes. I didn't know you could misspell diner, but I did. There was at least two chairs per table. Oh, shit, my computer's talking to me now. This computer announces the time. It is now 10 p.m. to give you some context of when I am recording this. 
It's 10 p.m. on a Thursday. Living the dream. Okay, there were at least two chairs per table. They were small, but big enough for a stuffed animal to sit in. Wow. A black pug was behind the counter. A clean white name tag read, Joe. Just, just Joe. You have a character called Peter B. Snuggles and just, just Joe. Peter jumped in one of the chairs. Give me a beer. Peter whispered. <laughs> His mom still didn't know he was drinking. How old is Peter? Why isn't he a dog? Isn't he a stuffed animal? Why is he drinking alcohol? Peter held his paw out with two gold coins. He placed them in the pug's paw and watched as he flicked the coins in the air and grabbing a jar of beer because that's how bars work at the same time. He placed the beer in front of him without making eye contact. Absolute savage. A thin mist seemingly floated over the- Oh, okay. I was, I was assuming- When you said jar, I was assuming like a bottle? But this is- This is like mason jar, it must be. Or like- What are they called? It's just like- It's just a glass. Just say glass. <laughs> uh, also, it's pre-made, apparently. <laughs> okay. A thin mist seemingly floated over the drink. He brought the jar to his lips. He's a basset hound and also a stuffed animal. He really does not have lips. When suddenly a scream pierced the basset hound's ears, the jar slipped out of his paw. Amy, he whispered. I don't know when he turned into Batman, but he's Batman, I guess. Beer was now crawling over his feet. That is not the right description. It spilled over your feet. It didn't crawl over your feet. A group of Rottweilers. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's getting real. Oh, shit. <laughs> a group of Rottweilers with black leather jackets and stormed the diner. One of them had his paw held over Amy's mouth. Everybody listen up. All caps. The Rottweiler's voice rang like a bell. The name's Butch. Butch. Of course your name's Butch. Of course you are a Rottweiler with a leather jacket and your name is Butch. Of course. Absolutely. He shouted. Butch ran up to Joe and whispered. <laughs> why, is, why are these like weird like juxtapositions of like yelling and then like whispering? Like I think I just didn't know any other way. I, I just didn't want to say said. This is what happens when you don't say just just fucking say said. It's okay. You don't have to make up some crazy thing each time. Just say said if you're having a conversation it, or says if you're in present tense. Jesus. Butch ran up to Joe and whispered, Give me all the money you got. The pug fumbled with the cash register with his crazy stuffed animal pug hands, shaking even more and more when he finally got it open. I don't have time for this. All caps. Butch's head was literally steaming. Literally. The pug was so scared, he just ripped the cash register out of the wall and handed Butch the whole thing. Thanks, he said sarcastically. What what in the world just happened? What in the good name of what in the name of the good Lord just happened? Peter's eyes were on Amy this Amy the whole time. Amy, he whispered once more. Amy <laughs> He dashed right at the rot roller's feet, letting him tumble to the ground. Amy ran off to the corner to watch from a safer point of view. Fucking Amy the Rottweiler simply pushed himself up and wiped the dust off his jacket. And that is all I got. That is all I have. That is it of these two chapters. It was was very short, but I was making fun of it so much that it took me so long to read. Um, That was the stuffed animal story. I don't know where I was going with that. It is funny, though, how a lot of, like, the imagery is kind of something that I've kept like for example like scenes in bars I do that still obviously I know a little bit more about how bars work as an adult than when I was like 11 <laughs> and like just like thieves I guess or like I don't know there's there's some weird similarities that is the stuffed animal story and now I'm gonna see how long these other ones are because this has already been quite a long time. Let me see. 
Okay, so the other two are actually much shorter. They're only a page long each. So I think we could I think we can do this. I think we can make it through it. It's just gonna be a little bit of a longer podcast, but I think I think we can do this. So the middle one, the second one that I'm going to read, I mean, I'm probably gonna make fun of these more, to be honest. Cause that wasn't actually that bad. Like it was it was crazy. It was a wild ride. It was definitely something a twelve year old was would write, but it wasn't that bad. At least in my opinion. I mean, you can roast me in the comments below, but cut me some slack. I was like 11 or 12 or some shit. Okay, so this one was also written in 2009. This one is a little more accurate. This one says 11.25.09 at 9 p.m. It seems way more likely that I would write at 9 p.m. than 6.15 (laughs) a.m. This one is titled Danny Phantom Fan Fiction but with fan fiction spelled with a PH because I thought I was really cool. I thought I was really cool, you guys. Uh, I still love Danny Phantom to this day, but I had, I was absolutely obsessed with it as a kid. Uh, Danny Phantom is exactly my aesthetic and I kind of stole his hair from my characters. Not gonna lie. That kind of, this kind of is where I got that inspiration from. Those thick ass eyebrows. That spiky ass hair that makes no sense. I love it. It's a good aesthetic. But this is gonna, we're gonna take a ride from like mediocre city to cringe city. So like buckle in because I don't know how this is gonna go. This is literally only a page. I'm just, my eyes are just skimming through it naturally and I'm seeing some sentences that are just not great. (laughs) Okay. All right, all right. Uh, the first sentence is so cringe. Get just f- fucking buckle in. You need to. You need two buckles, three buckles, just as many buckles as you can fucking find. Because good God, okay. Danny Phantom fan fiction. No human would ever know how to fly, to feel the wind brushing past them and their hair flowing in the breeze. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know what kind of cringe fest we're attending. Cringe fest 2009, apparently, but Jesus. Okay, I don't know what tense I'm writing in. Worries would disappear as you propelled yourself in the air without a care in the world. Why is this so much worse than the other one? This was written after it. I don't understand. That changed when a boy named Danny flew through the air on a regular basis. Today was different, though. He floated through the sky in utter blackness, even though it was daylight. His eyes were bloody red as he drifted aimlessly through clouds with his unconscious friend in his arms. Holy shit! (laughs) Holy shit! Holy shit, dog! Holy shit, dog! Wait, what's happening? What kind of context clues am I missing here? What happened in those couple months between me writing this where I suddenly have... uh, blood and guts i mean i've I've always been into it let's be honest but like holy shit (laughs) okay the snow white hair atop his head shimmered in the sun's rays a black jumpsuit with a familiar emblem on it reflected the blight turquoise sky cuts and bruises coated his entire body once again i didn't know how to spell coated i keep spelling it c-o-d-e-d not Coated. Coded, not coated. Good God. The friend in his arms slowly started to awake. (laughs) Oh, who's this? Who's this? Her smooth black hair dropped down to her shoulders. Danny. She whispered quietly. Oh, no, she quietly whispered. Danny turned to the girl. As her lavender eyes finally opened, she scanned her friend's face. I love how I'm referring to them as friends, even though I clearly sh- I clearly shipped the hell out of them at this point. Like, I'm friend zoning Danny so hard right now. Danny, can you see me? Danny tilted his head side to side. No, why is it so dark? Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. This guy, oh. The ghost boy stroked his hand across the goth girl's cheek. It's not. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) Oh no. 
He withdrew his hand and squinted his eyes. There was a look of frustration on his face. Oh, this is just sad. What's the... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sam, he asked, what do I look like? Sam stared downward. Uh, well, uh, well, ellipses, 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 uh, ellipses, 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 your ellipses, 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 ellipses. She managed to stutter when suddenly Danny snapped back to, uh, reality. His once red eyes were now a bright glowing green. Okay, okay. The boy shook his head and glanced at the raven-haired girl. He gasped, Sam, what happened? There was a scar across his arm and bruises on his face. Suddenly, the ghost boy's surroundings started to disappear, and he was alone in what looked like a small right white room. Holy shit, what the shit? Fuck, shit, fucking, what the fuck? Danny, he heard Sam's voice. Danny, can you hear me? Danny woke up only to find himself laying in a hospital bed with his friends by his side. Look, he's awake. Sam put her head to the raven-haired boy's forehead. And that, that is all you fucking get. That is all, all you fucking get. Are you fucking kidding me? If I had, like, been invested in this, if I was reading this, and I was, I am currently reading it, I'm invested. I want to know what happened. It's the worst thing I've ever read, but I want to know what happened. (laughs) He's so short. I know for a fact there's more to this too because I remember other things happening. I remember there being like a dance, like a school dance, and there was like a bloody towel at some point, but I don't have that. I just have this one page and nothing else. The rest is just lost to the universe. So that was Danny Phantom fan fiction because I am super edgy. Dot doc. (laughs) <laughs> okay I'm just gonna keep moving on I'm, g- I'm gonna keep moving on and I'm gonna move to the last one which is called 2012 there is no date of me actually writing this so I have no idea when I actually wrote this but I know for a fact it wasn't in 2012 because this is when there was that rumor going around that the world was gonna end in 2012 and that's why this is called this I remember that much but this was most definitely not written in 2012. Maybe 2011, but not 2012. All right, so here, there's no other information. The title of this is 2012 Revised Edition, dot, dot, which means there are many of these. <laughs> but I only have one page. That's all I have. It's one page. All right, once again, no formatting whatsoever, just a big glob of a paragraph. Okay. 2012. A small vessel drifted through the endless abyss of space in search of an incredibly small target. The small cylindrical ship was controlled by only two life forms. Okay, this isn't that bad. Just right off the bat. One of them stood staring at the glass wall, representing a window. Okay, no, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was very wrong. (laughs) Representing a window, separating him from the depths of space. His tall ears twitched to and fro from anticipation. Is this a fucking, like, furry? The ears were colored flesh pink on the inside and small red veins could be observed at a close enough distance. This is a rabbit furry. This is, this is a rabbit furry. This is what's happening right now. The outside of his ears were white and slightly transparent. Blonde hair covered the top. Wait, what? Blonde Blonde hair covered the top of his hair. Okay and was smoothly combed over, except for three strands sticking up. Nice. Anime. Love it. Long bangs hung in front of his face. Cut your goddamn hair. Get your shit together. Cut your goddamn hair. Why are you like this? Dot com. Why are you like this? Dot doc. Why are you like this? 2012 revised edition. Dot doc. His eye- Oh, shit. I just knocked over my pop filter. <laughs> his eyes were wide and cat-like. Okay, long ears but cat-like eyes, showing the color of liquid turquoise. <laughs> we did it again, boys. We back at it again with the liquid turquoise. We back at it again. Here we go. Here we go, boys. You know it's a good one when they hit you with the liquid turquoise. A collar was wrapped around his neck, and a small rectangular tag was attached to the bottom of it. Black and red fingerless gloves were worn on his hands. His jeans were long and baggy, covering up his shoes 
His shirt was skin tight with long sleeves extending to his wrist. It included a small hood behind it and appeared to be the color of a tomato. <laughs> Did this boy just come from Hot Topic? Why are you... You just came from Hot Topic and now you're in space and you're looking out a window. A long white tail. Oh, long white tail. Okay. What are you? What are you supposed to be? A long white tail stuck out from underneath his shirt. The other man was in a control chair navigating the shuttle. He was extremely tall and had abnormally long bangs covering eyes. Neither of them can fucking see. <laughs> He's navigating his spaceship and he can't fucking see. Alexa, this is so sad. His ears and tail were a burnt umber color, even though his hair was blonde. Okay, so they're both blondies. A long-sleeved yellow sweatshirt covered his body. Why did you... Why in the good... Why in the name of the good lord did you word it like that? That sentence made me very anxious. A long-sleeved yellow sweatshirt covered his body? That is not how you say that. <laughs> He also wore a collar and tag around his neck. What are these furries doing after they came from Hot Topic and now they're driving a fucking spaceship? The only sounds heard in the ship were soft beeping and whirring noises made by the central computer. Fucking Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> Why do we have to do this again, Greg? His name is fucking Greg. <laughs> What kind of fucking aliens? They fucking cry. Oh, I'm not done. I ain't fucking done. The first one asked. I told you, Jeremy. It's either us or them. Greg and Jeremy came from Hot Topic. And now they're in a spaceship in space. How do I get to space? Do I have to wear fingerless gloves and, and long sleeves? To be fair, I wear all these things. Can you please let me to space? NASA, this is my official... My official request to just join NASA, not years of school, just me just being a fuck show. Oh my god. And so serious too. Greg peeked over his shoulder at Jeremy, whose ears were pressed, pressed against his sides. These are some long fucking ears. And his eyes huge. He sighed and swiveled the chair so he was facing the other life- This is so incoherent. So he was facing the other life form. I know you've- what in the- what? <laughs> I keep skimming ahead and it's just too much. I know you've always been a sort of gloomy kid, but this is your time to shine. How are you in fucking space? You're gonna be saving millions of lives, Greg pointed out. How? Oh god. And killing them. Jeremy quietly remarked. Who is this fucking edgy teen? Oh my god. Sometimes I wonder how I'm related to you. Greg turned back around and continued watching a screen in front of them. Who put these kids in space? That's a better question. Jeremy planted his feet on the ground and stared at Greg in disbelief. So our mission is to destroy this planet to save our planet? Oh, okay. All right. I get what's happening. Yep. Greg <laughs> wow. Great. Just really just pushing these boundaries of just like, just politics and everything. Just like. So our mission is to destroy this planet to save our planet? Yep. Just, you, it, 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 that's how it is. That's how it goes. Greg started pressing buttons in front of him. Because that's how space works. Star Trek the next generation. But we'll be a dead giveaway. I mean, look at our ears. The inhabitants of Earth don't have ears like this. Oh, shit. <laughs> Their tails might be the same. Oh, shit. What, 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 what universe is this? But if we show up like this, we'll be thrown into cages. Jeremy took a heavy breath of air and watched Greg stand up. Listen, kid. Once we get to the planet, we'll just transform our ears. It's as simple as that. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't aware. I just wasn't aware. We're destroying the planet? Yep. Changing our appearance? Yep. It's simple. Greg concluded. Jeremy was about to respond, but was interrupted by a soft electronic voice. Planet Earth in sight. Prepare to land. Oh, shit. Siri fucking 2012. Oh, fuck. Shit. Fuck. Greg reached into his pocket and pulled out a small rectangular piece of pla plastic. iPhone. It's an iPhone of 2012. There were iPhones in 2012, right? In space? Yeah. Oh, no. It's a weapon. Oh, wait. I. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is your weapon. If you get into trouble, press the gray button on the side. Wow. Great. Amazing. Technology. Greg put the small handheld device in Jeremy's palm. He flipped it back and forth in his pale hands. Ooh, he's pale. Pale princess. 
from a hot topic. Rubbing his fingers over the edges. What kind of weird detail is that? That would make me so uncomfortable. Greg ran into his ran into the swivel chair and started pressing buttons again. Star to the day. <laughs> it's never gonna get uh, never gonna get less funny. When we get to Earth, transform your ears. The vessel started speeding up at a rapid pace towards the blue and green planet ahead. The glowing dot dots of stars became blurry and long blotches as they gained speed. Science. Fucking science. The ship began vibrating as green specks of trees began to show in the window. I don't... Why is there a fucking window? <laughs> there should be... There can be a display monitor. You can't have a window on a spaceship. <laughs> oh my god. A glowing red beam shone down on the two aliens and a loud siren sounded. Hold on to something. This is gonna be a rough landing. Greg continued pressing more buttons as they popped up on the control pedal. Tall gray buildings and bright lights passed by the large window. Stop! The large fucking window! <laughs> the large window of the shuttle. Trees got taller and the ground got closer to their spaceship. The ship jerked downward and the ground crashed into it and absolutely not the other way around. Leaving the window smashed and the bottom dented so much that it made the vessel smaller. That's all I have. They crashed. That's it. The end. They were gonna destroy the Earth. There was a lot of there was a lot of world building going on. A lot of pressing buttons. About twenty mentions of there being a window in a spaceship, even though this was less than a page. They oh my god, they fucking did, bitch. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, well that's all I have for you. That is all I have for you. This was very long. Thank you for sticking with me as I just like scream laugh at myself in 2009. Let me know if you want me to do more of this because I could probably find some more just like old ass fan fictions or even just like old ass art and stuff. I feel like that could be fun too. Maybe not for a podcast, but maybe for a video. But, but I don't I don't know if I I it was too much. It was absolutely too much for me to read normal things. I have no idea what it would be like for me to read pornographic things. So, also, I don't know if, if YouTube would let me do that. I'm choking up. <laughs> but thank you guys for hanging out with me. I had a good laugh. I hope you did too. <laughs> for however the heck long this was. I uh, hope I hope you guys had a good week. I hope you'll have a good week next week. And I'm going to end this here. And just start editing this fuck show. I hope the video is okay. I hope the audio is okay. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop talking and go to bed. Okay. Thank you so, so much for listening and for hanging out with me. And I will see you next week. Possibly. No promises. Okay, love you. Bye.